I was sent this script uh, at least a year and a half ago, and I never had a chance to read it. I was either booked on other projects and didn't see it as a, a possibility, um, schedule-wise, and I never actually sat down and read it. And um, uh, it wasn't until, yeah, like a, a year and a half later that it, it came up again, and I was looking for a project, and, and uh, I met with Charles Martin Smith, the director who I, you know, just been a fan of forever, just been in all of my, you know, favorite movies. Uh, one in particular, which a lot of people haven't seen, that uh, Sam Peckinpah directed, called uh, Pat, Garrett, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid, and uh, you know Bob Dylan and uh, and all of these great uh, actors were involved in that movie. And I, I remember distinctly Charlie's death scene, and I, I had an opportunity to meet with him on Snow Walker and talk about it, and and it was a great meeting. And I I, we, I think we we liked each other instantly. At least I can speak for myself. And. Uh, I just knew that he was um, the kind of director that, that was open to, uh, you know, really hearing ideas. Whether they work or not, just, you know, he was open to a real, really collaborative, organic process. And for actors, that's, that's the key. Um, you know, just allowing uh, the artist to be heard, whether those ideas are used or, or not, or they spawn other seeds of ideas that blossom into something else. Um, it, it uh, is really, I think, the only way to work, and Charlie's very, very open uh, that way. You know, so, so when I eventually read the script, um, I realized that this was the opportunity that I'd been looking for for all these years, trying to legitimize myself in the world market so that I could come back to Canada and have something to offer Indigenous film work. And this was the ultimate vehicle. I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a, I love the outdoors. I'm a real adventurer. And, and uh, so, you know, the character really spoke volumes to me. And I always can identify with characters that are flawed. You know, that they have a, take a really interesting uh, journey to redemption. You know, they come from a, from a, a place where, um, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're just ordinary men. They may be confused or they're, they're shattered from a, a, you know, a previous life experience. Um, but they they learn to overcome and uh, and it really is that transformation that I really identify with you know, uh, you know being a, an executive producer on Snow Walker has been just an incredibly eye-opening and, and fulfilling um, adventure for me I mean I, it, this film has been uh, so extraordinary in the way that we've actually filmed it I mean going out into the tundra for five days on these monstrous uh, tundra buggies and living out there with a crew of 40 for for five days in in these bug infested mosquito um, haze wilderness you know I mean it just it just doesn't happen anymore filmmakers just don't do that uh, style of filmography anymore you know it, it's mostly sets and studios and uh, you know, a little bit of location work, but you, you just, you never hear of people going out and camping out in a remote, faraway location where there are no amenities and no fancy, uh, you know, trailers or, or, or uh, you know, cast chairs or any of the, um, the trappings of, of uh, you know, usual Hollywood film sets. And it was so amazing to me how it bonded the crew. I mean, we became this tight-knit family that, that really could just get through anything together because we had honestly really laughed, cried, bled and sweat and tears uh, of joy and uh, um, you know we'd really experienced the full gamut together and, uh, and it just it, it really brought us together and I, I would match this crew against any crew in the world honestly I, I am so uh, so proud to be working with all these people and I've made so many friends for life on this movie and that that to me is really unique because you tend to do movies in the industry and you drift on and you you go off to another town to join another circus and and you it's not often that you really connect with people on a level where you you're you, you stay in touch um, but these people um, have made such an impression on my life that I I know that uh, we'll be we'll be friends for a long time. You know, the only training that I really wanted to uh, you know make as um, 
you know, believable and accurate as possible was the flying. So I, I, I tried to, uh, you know, learn much, as much as I could about these bush planes. The Norseman that I fly is a pretty tricky plane, and uh, we were just doing some filming in it the other day, and I actually, the pilot let me fly it. And uh, he did the takeoff and the landing, but once we were up there, I was doing all the, all the banks and the turns and the, and the uh, you know, we have to drop from 1,000 feet to 500 in like, you know, a few seconds when the plane is, is crashing, you know, the, the engine blows and, and we're racing towards the earth. And, and so uh, that was all really exhilarating. So I'm glad that I did my homework because, you know, he actually gave me the, the, the yoke and, and um, the pedals and I was flying. And, and he got so into filming that he's, he's talking to the director and, and back in the, uh, the cabin and, and I'm going, yeah, so what's the next shot? And I'm like, uh, hello, you know, I'm flying here. But I really, you know, I really got the hang of it. It was exhilarating. And uh, I realized that, that the pedals are like uh, working a kayak. You know, the water resistance is a similar sort of resistance that the, the wind has on the wings. And so you push left and the plane, the plane turns left. You push right, the plane turns right. And then the, the yoke, you pull back, the plane goes up, you push forward, the plane goes down. And the steering wheel is just for tilt, you know, for leveling your plane out. And then, of course, you, you know, sort of have certain gauges that you're checking and, and uh, you know, fuel's a big one, <laughs> and uh, engine temperature. And, and then you have this um, little indicator that shows, uh, you know, where your plane is um, on the compass and how, how level it is and try and just keep the little ball in the center and away you go. And, it was really great. I called my wife after that day of filming and told her that I had a new hobby and, and she said, do you hear the silence on the end of the phone? <laughs> she wasn't too impressed, but, but uh, wow, I really got the bug for it. I think the reason that I was so compelled to do Snow Walker originally was that um, the environment that the film takes place in is so close to home for me. And I, I grew up that way. Um, you know, my father was a hunter and a fisherman and raised us off the land with a very healthy um, respect for the animals that provided uh, themselves for us and and uh, you know we had always had a great big garden and and uh, grew up on a farm for uh, quite a few years and so I've I always have wanted to raise my family that way and so that's what I've done is I've maintained a home in, in Canada a farm and uh, you know animals and gardens and all of that and I, I fish and and I, I feel so at home in the wilderness that, that this was really not a stretch for me to come and do this. It was a real, a real pleasure.